makes its way through Kicking Horse Pass and the Valley of the Beaver. This was the first railway to link Canada from sea to sea, and it's still one of the busiest transcontinental lines. have played a vital role in the development of Canada, bringing with them new industries and new people. And so over the years, many towns and villages have grown up in the mountain interior. Revelstoke, Field, Kamloops, scheduled stops for the transcontinental trains that make the trip from Montreal to Vancouver in less than three days. For the through passengers, a 20-minute stop in Revelstoke is a good opportunity to stretch their legs before continuing the journey. But for others, it's the end of the working day. Here, the engine crew changes as the train is serviced and refueled. While others take over, these railroaders will be going home. In the town of Revelstoke, the railway cap is the trademark of the community. More than half the people here work for the railway. And though the stores on Main Street are much the same as those in any other small town, there's one in particular which all railroaders know well. jeweler is also the railway watch inspector and at least once a month every railroader who uses a watch must come in to get it checked and adjusted there's only one kind of time on the railways the right time it's almost a way of life in that part of the Columbia River Valley where the winters are hard and few industries flourish. But it's the only stretch of flat ground between two mountain passes and a good location for a railway divisional point. The territory administered from Revelstoke is divided into two subdivisions, about 125 miles of single track in either direction, with terminal points at Kamloops and Field. When a through train enters this territory, it is taken over by a local crew that operates back and forth within the subdivision 
and lives in Revelstoke. But the people in town are only one part of the community of railroaders. Along the track live section men to maintain the line, operators to relay train orders, track walkers to inspect tunnels, and maintenance men to repair signals. In fact, there are as many railroaders living and working along the line as there are in Revelstoke itself, the operating center. It's from here that train movements are controlled, and at the station, the dispatcher has an important role to play. Most of his line is single track, spotted with sidings every five or six miles. Harry Croft, known up and down the line as JHC, receives reports of each train's progress and works out where two opposing trains should meet. Here is a 19 Y East, copy three for them. Then he'll call two stations along the track, where operators can intercept the trains on either side of the meeting place. Canyon. Canyon. Hello, Stoney. Stoney. Here's the 19Y West. As he issues the order to the two operators, the dispatcher writes his own words in a train order book, carefully spelling out each number and place name. O N E F O U R T H R W T W O. Extra eight six six eight. E I G H T S I X S I X E I G H T East E A S T at Illa Silhouette. I double L E C I double L E W A E T. Sign J H C. Not until it is read back by each operator will this type of order be complete. Meticulously timed and executed, the routine will ensure safe operations along a line where as many as a dozen trains may be traveling. These two slips of paper are destined for the engineer and the conductor of passenger train number seven, engine number 1432. Now a scant few minutes away from the lonely operator's shack at Stony Creek. of his life, and although train orders hold few surprises for him, he still reads every word out loud to his helper, who must then in turn read the order back to him. Some 20 miles away, the same message is being delivered to the opposing freight train. Halfway between them is the siding where they will meet. The freight has now cleared the main line and waits for the passenger train at Illa Silhouet. The waves which railway people exchange with each other whenever they meet are much more than friendly hellos. They are professional signals, signs that the correct engine number has been recognized, and that both trains may proceed without delay once the track is clear again. Selkirk Range at the foot of Rogers Pass is one of the snowiest regions of Canada. An average of 50 feet falls each year on the lonely village of Glacier. 
The nearest town is 40 miles away. And so is the nearest grocery store. Some railroaders have brought their families with them, but others have had to make their real home in town. Such is Hugo Peterson, who is expecting soon to become a father. His wife lives in Revelstoke, while he works here five days a week. The heavy snowfall brings its special problems to the maintenance men who operate out of Glacier. Two brothers, Roy Parr and Eldon Parr, have the job of knocking down the snow caps before their weight snaps the telegraph wires. They are the nomads of the railroad, stopping off anywhere and working between trains. The morning lineup and Roy Parr's watch tell them how much time they have before the next train. Radio programs, telegraph messages, transcontinental telephone calls, all are carried on these wires. So are the dispatcher's train orders. When the brothers finish their 40 miles of track, it'll be time to start all over again at the other end of their territory. signals control the movements of trains over each section and it's the job of Lyle Anderson signal maintainer to make sure that they work each signal is wired to the railway track and connected to other signals farther down the line the current comes from a set of batteries which must be refilled and checked regularly Section man's day begins and ends on a six mile piece of railway track. He inspects it rail by rail, levels it, smooths it, tightens it. And he even eats his lunch beside it. Sam Romero knows every bolt and spike on his section. Train crews say his track is one of the smoothest rides on the Revelstoke division. After 42 years in company service, he plans to retire, to live on a farm, alone. The lorry sheds, wooden structures that protect the line from a mile-long avalanche slope and Joe Meldozi, track walker, whose only visitors are the other railway people of the line. When they have mail for him, they'll stop and chat for a while. Joe walks his piece of track six times a day, a half hour before each passenger train, looking for loose rocks or fallen timber. He lives by himself, close to the east entrance of the sheds.
Despite the isolation of their daily work, the people of Glacier share a sense of warmth and intimacy in their community life. Here, a railway station is not only an official place of business, but it's also a social focal point, where gossip is exchanged with the passing train crews. A place where a telegram from town about a newborn son will be spiced with a few friendly comments from the station agent. Glacier has no hospital, no doctor, no nurse. And so Hugo Peterson's child was born this morning in Revelstoke. The good news is shared by all, for here, eavesdropping on the party line is the accepted way to keep informed. storm may cake the telephone wires with ice or clog a switch with snow. Whatever they are, the tradition of railroading will call them out again. so ever since the railways began and there are stories about this stretch of track which have passed into legend stories of avalanches that buried whole trains when the railway used to go through Rogers Pass Those years are past history now. Today, a five-mile tunnel bypasses the old avalanche slopes. Elsewhere, the storm will be cleared in a matter of hours. The modern passenger looks out to a country as bleak and primitive as when this pass was first explored almost a hundred years ago.